Alice Potts and I grew up um, predominantly in Cambridge but have moved around a lot as a child and I've sort of come from a mixture of backgrounds from fashion, maths and chemistry before coming to RCA. <laughs> so I did um, a mixture of psychology, chemistry and maths where I sort of had to like believe my fate to sort of be going towards mathematics but um, I'd always sort of hated this idea that it was very confined and there was no freedom of what I could do with my work and how there was always a solution and answer and how it could be very repetitive and then that's why I chose to go into fashion because it was something completely new to me but something that fitted everything that I'd previously learned in but in a different perspective. I'm very lucky in the sense that at a young age I became sort of like a mature enough that I didn't want to feel sort of confined by one area. Like I would never say that I'm a master of fashion, a master of maths or chemistry and I think I've just always been driven by my need to want to learn more and I think that everyone different, like approaches knowledge in a different way. I think that's what's so exciting and I think by working with other people it then allows you to trigger a new approach to the work they're doing. So this has been um, my collection Perspire. Each of these pieces has been working with like the individual athlete and how I can use each individual sweat and grow a sort of piece that indicates how much effort has been put into their sport. So this like unseen truth about what they do as an athlete. So I've worked with like a mixture of footballers, ballet dancers, CrossFit and cyclists as well. And it's just like how each of these pieces can be like a complete individual piece of that person and like the story it tells along with it. So I come from like a really heavy sport background and had always had sport in my life. So I always knew about the bodily function and how that can be affected by low or high intake sodium. And so I just started, I think I'd spent six months with starting off with sweat, where I'd tried to find so many different methods and create a process that would allow me to create a structure. It's been a really bizarre sort of experience, but I think it's only to, it's only like when you explain to people what it is and how the process works that people generally start to actually see that it makes complete sense. So I think once you get people to think about like the whole idea of when you sweat and you start seeing these like white crystal like white patterns on it and that you start like explaining to people how you secrete sodium, it's then this sort of way that people actually start realising like how fascinated they are themselves about their own sweat. And I think that's what's been so great. It's this sort of like thing that people have sort of bad mouth for a long time because everyone thinks sweat is disgusting, but actually to see everyone's attitudes when they walked out of how they view sweat has been like a really nice experience. Like I think for me it's always been about keeping the science and the design element of it, but making it something which is personal, but something can, that people can really easily understand. And that's why, especially I worked with Perspire, because it's, sweat is something which equalises all of us. It's not something that one individual does because of their race or gender. It's something that everyone like, experiences every single day. When I first made it, I then was like, if I'm going to then approach this into a fashion realm, how would I then protect it? So how would I seal it? For me, it was like, I never wanted to make this natural material and then cover it with a man-made. So I thought about testing out bioplastics. And then I found a couple of research papers on bioplastics and had tried some of them out and all of them failed. And I think by not finding one that worked, I then became really obsessed with trying to find a process that would then work for me and then spent six months trailing off sweat crystals onto bioplastics and developing my own, my own recipe, but also sourcing my own waste from the areas that I worked in. Here is like sort of a small sector of samples that I've been working on. So I created sort of like a baseline recipe that worked with me. But for me, having previous work in like um, the fashion industry, I wanted to show the sort of diversity of the material. So not just showing it as like one flat sheet of what possibilities it could be, but the sort of 
hundreds of different ways that it could fit into, whether like you do materials which are completely like solids, like these ones, or whether you go into creating completely flexible materials. So for me, it was like how you could, how I could show them taking techniques that are already used in the fashion industry and replacing them in a biodegradable way. Right now is like a really important time to sort of like spread the message, especially about like biomaterials. Because I think for years now we've sort of mainly focused in technology, and I'm like completely not against technology um, whatsoever. But I think we've all sort of we've all known what's coming. We've all sort of even in films we've decided 20 years ago exactly what our future would look like, and so everyone's just been so easily convinced that that's going to be the final outcome. Now is a time where people have really wanted to sort of like re-find out about the world and re-find out about themselves and about materials instead of everything being so easy and being so quick and I think the sort of boredom that people feel right now is like pushing people to rebel against what standard sort of timeline is of things. I think that's what I love about my materials is that it it's really pushing people to think like what is a material and that's like the biggest message I want to get across is that these things that we buy every day that it's not it's not like we can't achieve them ourselves as individuals and we don't have to spend thousands and thousands of pounds on certain materials or certain fabrics but if we just spend a bit of time reusing what we own or learning about the structure and recreating that then we can get what we've always sort of like really wanted which is like individual pieces but we can start making a change as well as a person and I think that's what I find really exciting about bio and especially in fashion because I think fashion has such an opportunity to change compared to a lot of other industries that actually if we start changing the mindsets of everyone and everything then maybe that can start creating more of a sustainable future for all of us.